and we're live. Welcome to yet another source code performance roundtable. Uh, and uh, this week uh, we have all right. We have items in the agenda. Do you want to re re say say that again, Torsten? Your your first point. Yeah, I think last time was the first one, at least the first one that I joined, and we talked about a lot of different things. Um, but I think we didn't produce any uh, actionable outcomes. And uh, I would love that uh, if today we, we focus more on outcomes. Of course, uh, when a meeting is new, we want to understand what we want to achieve. Um, but now it's the second time, so let's try to, to create some outcomes. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, I think one of the things that I've seen is um, capturing the discussions we have in issues is beneficial to evolve towards those outcomes. Uh, I know that we have some discussions last week that um, don't seem to have resulted in issues. I don't see them in the board. So that's probably like one, of the, one of the homeworks I can do to kind of make sure that every discussion uh, is... Oops. Uh, is an issue. So um, that'll be my suggestion. I'll go through the open topics and open issues. Uh, but yeah, good stuff. Anything, anybody has more thoughts? Or should we move on to Dennis's point? Let's see, maybe we can draw some uh, actionable items from, from the discussion. All right, let's go. Uh, tell us what uh, what your point is, Dennis. Yes, the point is that uh, technically it's like seconding the the question I raised during last meeting, and um, as just like Torsten, I I'm not sure we we have concluded anything anything actionable. So, um, but the consensus seemed to be uh, that we should uh, look at the page loading performance for different routes and talk about uh, user journey performance optimization. So these are two things that we can um, we can take as the starting point. Um, optimizing for any of this will will result in better performance overall. Uh, the interesting part is that, performance of the user journey directly is directly dependent on the performance of the page loading so if if the page loading the initial page loading is not performant enough then the user journey won't be performant enough so uh, maybe it makes sense to actually start analyzing the page loading performance for different routes that we have i have linked the um, i have added the link to the dashboard which lists all of the routes we measure at the moment related to source editor, uh, to source code. I'm sorry, I confused the things again. Uh, to source editor. Uh, ah, again, to source code. It's muscle memory. <laughs> it's uh, uh, like to, edit, to everything. It's actually, it contains different things related to source editor as well. Uh, the interesting thing is that to avoid confusion, probably the very first step would be uh, the uh, organizational to to rename the routes we have there because is, if you take a look at the dashboard there will be routes uh, labeled editor because they're related to snippets or to file editing uh, and those are source code now right so those have to be relabeled so that we have a better overview of the things uh, under our responsibility so the dashboard shows that uh, even though a lot of the a lot of the routes, like most of the routes, are in the green zone, right? So seventy six point five percent of the routes are in the green zone. It doesn't mean that they are performant because um, most of them are still loading uh, slower than one second, which was the paramount like about five years ago, and we still haven't reached it yet. Right. Um, I have analyzed a couple of routes, and um, and the tendency is pretty much um, pretty much stable. I can share my screen probably to make things a bit. Uh, 
more detail. So here's the dashboard. So all of these things are related to us. And um, um, the interesting thing is that, so the, the I'm not sure whether the file, bl file blame is a source code or source code review. I'm not sure, but um, yeah, it's ours. It is. It's ours. ours. It it's is ours. Code. Yes. So, uh, Natalia says it okay, really proud. But, but bad for bad for us then. Let's 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 push it to another group. Then then we will solve half of our problems. Um, that's what we did at, at the editor, at at least we just pushed the things to other groups <laughs> and that then making their problems right. So that's um, I can. That's I can the best. Just, yeah, I can give some lessons. It didn't work out for you, Dennis. Yeah, yeah. It didn't and now, work out for that, you, Dennis. They pushed you with the work. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, that's that's uh, that's the thing. Like snippet, we uh, on the other hand, we have uh, like on the on one side of the of this uh, band technically, we have the really performant pages. So a snippets explore, uh, snippets dashboard, and now the interesting thing. So even look taking a look at this dashboard, we can make a really simple conclusion. The more we the more we rely on view, I know Andrea will hate me now, but the more we rely on view, the the harder is the performance hit. So because neither snippets explore nor snippets dashboard uh, use any view. These are straight rails uh, views. Uh, while these guys are like uh, view heavy lifters, right? However, this doesn't mean that we do not need to go to, to refactor things to view. What it means is that we have to be very careful with when, when refactoring to view and know, understand the limitations that view uh, brings to performance table. So if we take a look at this page for uh, at this page, for example, let me just actually let me just share the whole screen because this is um uh let me just stop sharing and share again if you have any questions in the meantime just feel free to ask otherwise would like uh, uh actually who's next uh, andrew andrew you have a question about historical records yes so coming back to your point of renaming the routes from editor yeah uh my understanding is like the key here is the url right yeah Not yeah sure we can change the sure. names without losing the history of historical yeah. records, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just it's just confusing to to have the the routes that are technically uh, our responsibility to have it lab, to have them labeled as editor, but the the URLs won't be changed. It's just the the really the labeling. Uh, the URLs here won't be changed. Uh, I guess let me just uh, well it well it might be changed actually. But the history won't be affected. The the URLs, if somebody has a, a specific route bookmarked, then the URL might be changed. But the history will be there no matter what. So let's talk a bit about the uh, about this uh, blob blob uh, blob view small route. This is it. Uh, the interesting thing that we have here is that. Um, Blob view small and blob view large are not that different in how they perform, right? Even though it might might feel like they have to be different. And the performance of this page is very interesting because if you take a look, oh, actually this is this is repo. Where is this? Yeah, blob view small. So if we take a look at the uh, performance analysis of this page, the film strip is very descriptive thing. So when a user gets to the blob view page, they get here to view the blob. That's why it's called blob view page. However, the actual blob content is near is nearly not prioritized at all. So this uh, the content triggers the LCP uh, and it happens at 3.4 seconds. However, we render all sorts of information before this uh, this happens. And the 
question why this happens is, or sorry, the answer to the question why this happens is because we fetch all sorts. Of, this is the uh, uh, the these are the uh, fetch requests, and the blob content is fetched as the very very last request in the stack of the calls. We can do much better than that. We know we are on the blob view. We have to fetch this content much sooner. And like even code owners, in, in this particular case, we 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 do really um uh, really dramatic thing. We fetch all of the code owners, even though we don't render them, we do fetch all of them, like 160, whatever, like uh crazy number of of, of code owners. Uh so things like this and this is the pattern we we technically have um we we load things in the order they appear on the page instead of low prioritizing the uh the things that are really important for that or uh, or another page so uh my my sort of to wrap it up to wrap up this ranting uh what we should start with is looking at that dashboard and uh, start analyzing the um, the routes and start prioritizing the important parts on every route that goes beyond one second, namely most of them. Because this will dramatically improve the LCP of the routes, and this will dramatically improve the user journey as we as the next step in the performance story that we will optimize for. Uh, at that second stage, we have like this uh, really um, high level discussions as we had with Torsten about the in-context editing uh, in the repository. This will affect the uh, performance of the user journey where we switch from viewing a blog to editing a view without reloading the page. So we do this in-context uh, swap and that will reduce the... Uh, uh, the time for the for the overall user journey. Um, but we, as I said, before we optimize for user journey, we have to optimize the page loading times because this is going to be the hit uh, in the user journey, no matter what. This is the first visit to a page, which will uh, inevitably affect the user journey time. Anyway, so yeah, I'm done with my ranting. Well, well it might not be the first one though. Yeah, sure. So if, if you start with a repository, you're starting yeah. with the file tree first, no. and the end of the user journey will be in the middle of yeah. the journey. Right. Yes. Um, Tarsen, you had some questions before mine, so let's go from top to bottom. Yes. So I would like, um, if it's possible, can we add to this dashboard the um, popularity of these pages, uh, how often they're being called? Uh, no, so no unfortunately. We can make a decision. Based Unfortunately, no, we cannot do that. Content. This is this is uh, this is uh, this these, these dashboards are not connected to uh, to any analytics of this sort. This is purely to uh, to run the performance analysis in the background uh, and just spit out the report. This has no correlation to the. So technically, to get the uh, to get the mapping between this dashboard and the popularity, we have to build the popularity dashboard, and then map those together. But it's not. Uh, I don't think it's possible in the in the Grafana dashboard. And can we get the data out of uh, Grafana into Cypher so that in Cypher we could, for instance, have the side by side? I I'm not that familiar with Cypher to to say, uh, to answer this question, unfortunately. So Sysense works with limited licenses model. So not everybody has a editor license to create dashboards and queries. I, for example, don't have one. Um, Matt in code review has one. Um, I don't know, Vasily, do you have uh, a license to Sysense editor? To Sysense, I do have some access, but I'm not sure if I have like a full access. To create dashboards and stuff maybe sean has it we can look around to see if we can have someone take a look at that option uh because i feel like yes it's a definitely an important variable to check torsten so thanks for that suggestion i think if, if it's possible to do it have to be on that side um so i don't know if sean if sean doesn't have it i can ask matt to take a look around and if we don't have anyone in the source code to have it we should probably get someone who do um because it's going to be useful to create dashboards and stuff so 
I'll create an issue to track that uh, that particular thing about creating a dashboard uh, that crosses performance metrics and or again crosses these pages with uh, popularity by page on based mm -hmm. on page views. Um, even if it's not impossible to import the actual metrics into SciSense, as long as we have the same listing of routes on the dashboard, we can cross reference them manually. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, we need to not constantly look this up. We need to look this up to make a decision, and then three months later we look it up again. So if it's on two different dashboards, that's fine. But... The complexity right. here is that, for example, here in uh, in, in Grafana we have uh, several entries for exactly the same route, right? So how uh, this this will create the complexity? Like for the blob view, we have small blob view, we have large blob view, uh, and it's but it. For the for the popularity, it's still the same blob view page, right? Mm. Correct. Okay, that would be then. In this case, uh, small and and large was kind of the same in performance, right? So uh, there it wouldn't matter. But we had other examples where large and small was relevant. I think for yeah, the I think so. Like we uh, could... repo small and repo large are quite different surprisingly enough repo large performs much better than repos small don't ask me lcp what exactly what what exactly repo large does it mean it's like repository files on the... yeah repository with a lot of files and repository with few files independent of what you actually see on the screen um no, dependent. You can have, have like a repository saying. with millions of. You can have a repository with millions of files. That have <laughs> can you? Folder. So if you see the first folder, you see like one thing, and ah, uh, this is a good question. Um, let's let's just find out. We never know unless we find maybe out. Maybe that's a, maybe that's the reason why uh, large performs. Uh, small. Uh, my theory Maybe is the large small. one has less thing in the in the page that's no, being looked at. I can guarantee that it's because of the LCP being attached to different elements. Yeah, that's that's probably uh, most probably that's that's the thing. So we select GitLab, we go to large repo, and then we we're going to open up the repo small. Here, uh, oops, uh, okay, repo, small. So we are gonna analyze, this one is here, and then uh, this is the large, is gonna be- I know, I know what's wrong. Okay, follow okay. the links, follow the links and you'll see right, it's different pages. So essentially, right, one, okay. one is listing the so root this folder. Is the, this is a large. Okay, yeah, so it's not the header, right? And then this one has the is, header, uh, right? So technically, <laughs> wait a second. Screen Still up. interesting. Like what? What particular element actually triggers the uh, the LCP on each of this? So we are on the small repo, and the LCP is triggered by where is the LCP? Here we go by. What's that by the by this bar? Seriously, like this is the largest <laughs> man. This is this is ridiculous. But uh, this this is the interesting thing. So repo small performs worse than the large, and even in this case, it's not the actual repo list that triggers the LCP. It's the it's this this bar which triggers the LCP, which is which is really. A uh, really bizarre, uh, bizarre thing. Yeah, where is it? So, yeah. So we are, we're not doing uh, very good here. And then on the large repo, the LCP is uh, is triggered by the um, by this um, how you call it, like placeholder for the repository, right? So, which is not very useful either. In general, this mean this technically means that the pages, in particular, a repository, are performing even worse than the numbers tell us. 
It's the LCP uh, gets trick, tricked by, uh, by elements that have nothing to do with actually repository, unfortunately. So this is another thing. We have to probably go do the analysis of the, of the monitorings and figure out how to adjust the uh, monitoring so that we would get useful information instead of uh, information on the elements not related to, to actual repository. Yeah. Natalia has a raised hand. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I just wanted first to ask which file you were analyzing, but I already saw that it was like just main.js. I just checked a couple files now and I don't see what you mentioned about that code owners are loaded before the blob info. So what I see. <laughs> In my browser, everywhere, like first we load blob data and then we load code owners. So I'm just confused. About okay. It. Okay. Um, I checked several files and it works. Let's, Is this everywhere? Let's check. And uh, also, I just wanted to, yeah, to say to Dennis uh, about code owners that, yeah, we had a plan like to make a fix so that we first fetch first five five code owners and yeah. then the rest but i don't remember right now why we decided not to do that well there is a, in, in general there is a new discussion about the, this code owners yeah line. yeah and in that's general, what i wanted to say to you that question, we're gonna question the need of this we'll just uh, don't show them at all don't show names and all and then we will fetch like once the user hits the expand thing so yeah. This is something you shouldn't worry about. Okay, so let's um, let's do the thing here. So we have some some error thrown here, but you see the the if we go to the network tab, do you see my screen now? Yeah, I see your screen. So if we go to network tab on this particular URL, mm -hmm. I don't know whether it's this particular URL or it's the general thing, but on this particular URL, if we take a look at the network tab, mm -hmm. the blob content will be the last uh, uh, request. Okay, some extensions go in now, but the blob content is at the very at the very end of the of the call stack. And if you take a look at the uh, but the waterfall now it's okay let's reload this um so it's not the last one now but if you take a look at the waterfall this is where we start requesting it mm -hmm. really really late in the process we fetch branches we fetch tags all of these things are fetched before we fetch the blob content even though we can fetch blob content so I had a note notes. below, Dennis. I thought I thought we had done this for the to adding that to um, startup JS, uh, and it feels like we only added that to the blob info query, but not to the blob mm. content query. So that seems like something we can look into. Could be, could be. I don't know. This again, as uh, I didn't do any any deeper research, but that's um, so we we fetch the we fetch the repository blob information as the very first thing. This is great, yeah. but the actual content comes as the last thing. And we cannot really use Startup GS for, for the content specifically because we have to know how whether we have to fetch the content, whether we show the simple viewer or we show the rich viewer. And that information is based on, the, right. on this very first query. So we cannot really put this into the Startup GS, but we can optimize the things uh, so that we, once we get the uh, blob, uh, the general blob, repository blob information, we fetch the blob, uh, blob content right away. Apparently, I don't know. I'm just speculating now because I didn't do this, but that's, uh, that's, uh, that's the reason why we cannot use blob content query oh, in that's, the startup GS. That's great. Uh, what I'll do is I, I won't open issue saying like, add blob content to startup js but i'll say that uh find a way to prioritize blob content loading yeah i Thanks. think we have i think i think it would make sense to have something like you know um 
epic at, at some point to go through the different routes because we are talking about the blob now, uh, blob viewer now, but there are uh, multiple routes that that we we will benefit from prioritizing uh, the actually important parts. So that's um, but we can start with with the blob viewer as as one of the probably most used routes and repos repo view probably I don't know. So again, to wrap up this whole uh, point that I took took all the time, excuse me, but um, I think we have to prioritize the the page loading performance before we get to the user journey performance, uh, because this part, even looking at the numbers, numbers are okayish, but they do not reflect the real situa the real situation. Uh, it's the 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 actual performance that users experience might be worse because we we just trigger LCP on the wrong elements. Yes. So with that in mind, I wanted to ask you this before I move on. So I I I thought we had done this, but it seems like we haven't from my inspection. We don't have uh, performance marks on this app, um, and it feels like this example of having two repos being triggering different LCP elements. Like, shouldn't shouldn't we, because um, this is very familiar to you because you added the first ones to the GitLab, um, shouldn't we add these in as a task to kind of like start to have a distinctive way of comparing two different pages and not be affected by the LCP variations? Uh, do you feel like that's... User timing metrics, you mean? Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's what I wrote there. That's, uh, that's the thing that we should, uh, should be... Uh, should should optimize for. So um, for those who are not familiar with this, uh, many, many years ago, when the world was much better place to live in, um, I uh, we added, we started using the user timing metrics. So the custom metrics in the product, uh, which uh, didn't get um, wide adoption simply because they are really custom metrics. So for um, they allow to measure exactly the thing, the, the performance of the elements that you that that or another page cares about. So um, for example, yes, so Andrea has this. So there is a bunch of things that we have added. So technically what it uh, allows us to, to do is, for example, when we talk about the blob uh, blob viewer, we can set a mo special mark in the code saying, uh, uh, marking the time when the actually blob content has been output on the screen. And that's the, the, uh, that's the real measurement of performance for that or another uh, uh, view. For example, when it comes to the repository view, the view of the time when the files have been output, not the skeleton thing, but the actual files have been output. This is the the measurement uh, of performance. I I have implemented a bunch of these things in the in the product. We also have uh, a view plugin for view components. Uh, very few people know about that, uh, but simply because I was tired of pushing for this at some Seems point. Seems like a blog post to be written, Dennis. Oh man, uh, okay. uh, we even. We even had the, con I, I think I even mentioned this during the Prague conference call. Oh, nice. Uh, conference uh, yeah. like uh, session. So, yeah. but nevertheless, uh, there are, uh, if you if you go to, um, to and I actually, I think on the blob view, we do have those marks. We do have custom user marks. Let me just double check, but we can talk about other things. Regardless, uh, yes, I, let's move on to the next yeah. point. Uh, in the agenda, which I think, uh, Vasily, do you want to mention your point? Yeah, I just like saw that we have the blame endpoint is quite, it's like one of the top endpoints that we have. And I just remembered and wanted to share that recently that Stanislav was working on including streaming to this endpoint. I'm not sure if it was enabled with the, because it was deployed before, behind the feature flag but we might see some improvements for it.
Thanks, Vasily. Sorry, I was writing it then. Um, so recently, Jacques and uh, Vasily collaborated to add um, one URL that will be inheriting the streaming when the feature kicks in. Uh, so essentially, we have a, 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 a URL. So the blame page by default lowers the paginated version. Then we have the no pagination parameter, right? Right now, the no pagination is just the old way of rendering the full page and it breaks and, and all that stuff. When the page, when the streaming gets enabled, that page no pagination will start streaming. We added the no pagination to the site speed dashboards before the site the streaming was enabled, so that we get to we get to compare the two. Uh, I haven't looked at it yet, though, uh, so I'll take a look right now. Um, but anyway, uh, blend page. I don't see it yet, but uh... so yeah, it's there. Added that to the site speed. We'll definitely find a way to track that uh, performance impact. Cool stuff. No, I, when I when I saw that uh, that HTML streaming thing, like that was uh, um, that that Vasily started. Uh, or, uh, that no, it was. Um, it was Stanislav who was working with that thing, right? So, and that uh, that was uh, super cool. That's uh, that's amazing stuff. So I'm uh, I really hope to see more of that. Yes, this was the first time that this was rolled out to any part of the GitLab. Um, we we're looking to learn about it and potentially try to bring it over to Code Review as well, because you know Stanislav is Code Review. Um, he's also my team, so um two personalities here um but yeah we're looking to learn from this rollout on the blame page and see the impact of it all and there's also even more steps that we can start doing instead of rendering things in the back end where there's another plan for later once we have you reviewed three to start doing that on the front end but yes definitely and just a very interesting approach that we're looking to learn from rolling it out Thanks, Vasily. Um, right, Dennis, you have another point. Yeah, um, I I never have enough points in any agenda. I'm sorry. Uh, I just wanted to to make sure that uh, we are on the same page in in regards to the to the steps that we have to take. So the uh, from from what I understand, the first one is relabel the entries in the. Uh, um, uh, site speed dashboard. Uh, then update, the, analyze the things, the uh, analyze the routes, and uh, use user timing, user custom timing metrics to measure what really matters for that or another route. Um, uh, that would be would be interesting work, and maybe we could do this in the form of pair programming. So that more people would know about this, uh, about how to do this. So anybody uh, willing to to participate would be would be welcome, probably. Uh, so we update the metrics, and then we will have the proper uh, proper uh, understanding of real performance of that or another page. At the same time, we try to find the um, the popularity of all the pages that we are responsible for and try to some somehow map the performance dashboard with uh, with that statistics to, to figure out uh, like technically from my understanding this will give us the priorities what views should be prioritized for that or another um, performance work because we might spend our time for optimizing something that is barely used uh, in the product so that's uh that's good starting starting point i think and after that we will be able to talk about the user journey uh, optimizations i think i have Does it sound? in the meanwhile added uh your a statistic i've extended it to include the blame page and the blame page is very little used, which if I didn't make a mistake. Um, so we see that it's, uh, let me check in size and maybe I share the screen. Uh, 
So the blame page is down here. It's uh, up to 10,000 and this is up to 400,000, which is the directory. Uh, so there's the, uh, not the blog, what's the other one? Uh, when the I repository. see the directories, what's that? Called? Repository. Repository, yeah. yeah. I can change the name to repository. So that's the most visited. Then we have a bunch here in that middle field, like commit uh, details, like uh, uh, files and so the file file view, the blog view, and the commit list. Um, I'm doing this um, by looking for um, things in the URLs like this which is a bit dangerous because there could be something like commits somewhere else that isn't um you know really commits uh or um commit right so that's how i did it and uh, that if, if you have uh, better ideas how to make this more safe please let me know this is uh this is really helpful because we'll probably add the slash dash on that pattern matching torsten Sorry, Dennis. Uh, sorry, uh, where? So you know how the URLs have a slash dash uh, so that we can distinguish. Yeah. So for example, if you put that in the string lookup, um, I'm guessing that that will prevent branch names from being picked up on that. It should be pre as a prefix before tree, before blob, before blind. Yeah. I, should, I think. Yeah. Okay. But uh, so we have look, put it look there. At... It will be uh, the default branch, or what, what does it mean? Sorry, what? If I put the if I do this here, what will be the effect? Will I only pick up like the default branch, or uh, no? We essentially be... essentially pick up the page views of the blame page explicitly, and that wouldn't trip in case there's a branch. Yeah. Well, Name. or project or project blame or pay or uh repository called blame or something like this because branches can have slashes okay mm -hmm. so here in this example i have this if i go to i have to move your picture around again if i with the branch selector yeah so after the name of the oh, project you always have that little dash and then this the first word there yeah the first word there is always like the page that you're seeing is the tree, the blob, yeah, blame, throughout. Okay. commit. So even if I go to a different um, branch, branch, it still has this. Okay, so I can thing. improve it by simply adding everywhere the minus. Exactly. Yeah, it could be slash yeah. minus but as well. Not slash slash minus probably makes makes sense. Yeah. And exactly. what about um, I have also things like graph. Does that have it as well? I believe so. We did that a while ago. Uh, Just check after the call so we can optimize that. But looking at looking at this at this this chart uh, uh, made me look at the <clears throat> performance dashboard. And actually, we do not monitor performance of the commit and commits pages at all. So probably we need to uh, to align this uh, this chart with uh, with what we measure because if the commits are uh, it, like a commit view or commits listing are pages with a lot of views then probably we should start monitoring those and uh, optimize those as well i think we yeah. do monitor those commits pages we do wait where do we do it somewhere else or i think we do it in the 10K. That's a great opportunity to clarify that. So uh, what Natalia is talking about is the quality team's 10K reference architecture performance uh, reports. And in that case, they have their own cases, their own pages that they monitor. And that's uh, you know, a reference architecture for 10,000 users installation of GitLab. That's something that they run on a separate instance in a controlled environment requesting its own uh, URLs, um, and that's produced daily. Um, 
the site speed page that we're looking at is monitoring live URLs in production. They're different pro the different monitoring projects, they aim to cover the same ground, but slightly different where one is live URLs on production affected by outages and delays and stuff like that. The other is a controlled environment to capture regressions, right? Uh, here, we're looking at like actual live metrics there. So Dennis is calling out that we're not, we don't have an entry on the site speed live gitlab.com URLs to track commits. And I just checked, that's correct. Natalia, you're also correct. So I don't take 10K reference architecture. We do track commits. So that's the dissonance in the, the explanation. Is that clear? Sorry. Yep. Okay. It's everything is very confusing. The uh, the 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 question is though, uh whether so from by commits, I assume the list of commits in, in an MR or in the repository. That's when we go to the repository and click commits, right? That's the listing of commits, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. We also we also track a project commit. Um, I'll put the link in the agenda so you can all take a look at the report, okay? That's okay, weird. I'm why why would here. people why would people come to this page so often? Like what's so interesting here? Which pages? Uh Commits listing. Let well, me, uh, let me run it again. I fixed it now. Maybe it had to do with, um, you know, that being part of some URLs. Right. Um, so that that is to that question. Like, it, if you are, if you want to know whether a commit is in a branch, that's where you go to. It's the commit list page because then you can do searches by commit right. names by the and name, authors yeah. and stuff like that. So yeah. the page is valuable. And again, I wanted to say something before. We have to understand that the blame page is very small compared to others. So the relative popularity is definitely low. However, when the user needs a blame page and if they goes to the to the to the web version, it's usually motivated by you want to share it in a discussion. So it's particularly useful even if it's low visited. So it's kind of like and there's another thing where if the page is slow, people stop using it as much. So um, by making it faster, theoretically, we can track the uh, increasing popularity here too. That's a lot yeah. of theory, but yeah. It's very useful to have it though. It's, it's with, with performance, it's always like the chicken and the egg question. Like, do people visit this page rarely because of the bad performance or uh, is the bad performance attributed to the fact that the page is not popular enough, <laughs> so it doesn't get any uh, any attention? What is the norm? Okay. So um, it it remains that uh, the commit detail and commit list are rather popular together with files and where was that one to hide all these that are not relevant it's files directory is obviously popular So I can have a screenshot of those, which are the ones we discussed and which are relevant. <clears throat> and you have the link to the dashboard as well. So it seems we should uh, we should check uh, that other dashboard that Natalia mentioned in terms of uh, performance, because that might be more relevant than the blame page.
Sorry, what are we doing? What, uh, I, I drifted out. I was writing something in the agenda. So I would suggest uh, let's let's look at the dashboard that Natalia mentioned in terms of uh, you know commits and uh, commit uh, detail view to see how those perform. And if they don't perform well, it would probably be more important to fix those than the plain page because of its significantly more higher um, popularity. Um, admittedly, popularity can go up if performance goes up. So there is a bit of a chicken and egg problem. But um, if commits and commit detail view are important, then we should, and slow, we should fix those problems. If you stop sharing the screen, I can show you the, the metric just for curiosity. Yes. Thank you. So this is from, wait, still loading. There you go. Um, this is from the 10K performance architecture. So if you come here, right up on this top, you have a results history dashboard, which will take you to a full-on dashboard on, on Grafana with all the metrics here. Then if you go to site speed report, that's where you get the actual report sorry, the actual report for each one of the URLs tested. You can drill down if you want, but zooming in on LCP, for example, um, if you want to see compared to file rendered, oh, so it looks like we had a spike here. Um, file branch, file blame. These are the, the relative LCP, so they're pretty high. And here one is the project commit page, which is the details of a commit. This one here is the list of commits. So if you have to compare between those two, the commit detail page is definitely a worse offender. It's on the red, so it's above the, the threshold. Uh, so is the file render. But then again, we end, then have to see how big is the file render. Um, but anyway, just as a curiosity, we can take a look at it after the call to kind of like have those decisions for the sake of time. Okay. Okay, so we make a uh, we make issues for for both of these, and uh, then discuss on both of these issues whether yep. it is uh, both popular and slow. But it seems it is the case. Uh, and then, uh, if you could create that, uh, it'd be nice. Make sure you add the label for the performance roundtables as well. Okay, uh, you mean me? I shall create it. Um, if you want to. I don't know, but I can. <laughs> Thanks, <Yes. Simpson. laughs> Okay, um, I added one last point here. Um, does anybody have any other thoughts on this topic that we're just discussing, or can I move on to this last one? Let's move on. Okay, thank you. I was giving some awkward pause. Um, so I'm bringing up these two proposals. Um, so Dennis previously talked about the user journey metrics and improving the, the time that gets the user to the destination, what they're trying to get to. Um, so there were, there were two particular issues that they're like low visibility, low effort also, um, I would say low effort, famous last words, um, proposals. One is to add a little popover um, with uh, blame information for that particular line on the gutter, on the line numbers which essentially if we have a backend endpoint to get the blame information for a specific line, like we the front end could sort it out and present it on popover and we can load it only when the user pops over that part. So performance wise only generates load when we need to. Uh, so that's one proposal, which sometimes user just wants to see the blame information of one particular line. Um, that would prevent the user from going to the whole full, full blame page uh, and then have to render the whole thing just to see one line. And the other uh, is a proposal that goes a little bit beyond that and essentially uh, is a, a like a drastic proposal to, instead of having a separate blame page, we could be rendering the blame information for all lines within the blob viewer. So essentially when you're seeing a blob content, the blob page itself, um, we could potentially toggle the mode to blame, to show blame information and instead of reloading a whole nother page with a whole nother file contents again, presented in different ways, we could just request the remainder of the information necessary to render the blame page, 
in portions, just the portion that the user is viewing, and then eventually stream the rest, um, which could potentially be very beneficial for the end goal of reaching the blame information. So I wanted to raise visibility for these two because the aim of them is to increase, perform, improve the performance metric of the user journey that the user wants to get to the blame page without having to, you know, redo the whole blame page. It just brings things over to the blob, blob information page, the blob page. Um, so yeah, wanted to raise visibility, we have thoughts, we have five minutes, but if not, feel free to add them in the issues. Thoughts? I have a question. Yes. Uh, I like this, this proposals. They, they really nicely align with the, uh, uh, with the idea of uh, doing in-context editing and the inline uh, editing as uh, Torsten proposed uh, during our uh, chat this week. But the question I have is by improving the user journey for the blind page here, won't we harm the loading performance for the blog view page? Because let's assume <clears throat> we're getting rid of chunks pretty soon and we have a blog view for a thousand lines. Flashing information for blame for every line sounds like a really expensive thing but maybe there is some some trick that i uh, that i don't understand uh yet i will great figure question. this out that's a great question i think i'm going to take more than four minutes to answer so we can discuss that in issue but i'll give you a tldr the blame page itself it's still built with old tech um, so if we have new tech powering the blame page, we can be smarter about loading the data. We don't have to load the entire thing. And eventually, if we refactor the blame page, eventually part of that work would be essentially building the blob page again. So my idea of for, for the first one, definitely it's not replacing the blame page. The second could potentially replace the blame page if we get to a better performance place. And I'll stop there. Okay, Italian? and I would, I want to say that, um, like, I don't think I like the idea of throwing the blame information to the user without request. So, for example, I as a user, I don't want to know like, uh, the blame info unless uh, there is some button you press and then we can load it on the same like blob right. page, but yeah, not like from the start, I think. So you're saying that you usually you usually reach for the blame information when you're already seeing the file. No, I'm just saying, like, why would we show blame information if uh, nobody asked for it? Like, if you're viewing blob page, like most in more, you're not necessarily interested to see like who wrote this code. You just... Oh, but okay, so I'm probably worded. That's more poorly. about point two because you said that we can load it from the start, like the blame info as. Okay, I, this is a really great question because it helps clarify the proposal. Neither of these two show blame information without the user requesting it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Is, always is it, have to is it, a is it a click or is it a hover? The first is a hover, the second would be a click. Would okay, I would vote for click. The mode. I would vote for click. Could be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think it can be clicked for the first one as well. User can click on the line and only after that, or like on the specific icon, and only so after that we show them. Let's go and add these comments on the issue right now so we don't forget, because all of that will be information for Michael Lay, the designer, to kind of like help us drive that proposal through. Okay. Sounds good. Great questions. That's why I brought this up. So there are already better proposals because of this. Um, any more thoughts on that? Can we wrap up? All right, another awkward pause just to end the call. Uh, just, just, oh, just, just one question. I'm sorry. Yeah, I won't let I won't let you go that easy. One minute. Uh, yeah. Uh, do we do like do we split the the responsibilities like for doing the actual actionable items? Or are we going oh. to come back to the next meeting and ask what are the action <laughs> items? So I've taken much. So every open issue to track bold statements, I will take care of. Um, okay. So essentially that covers the things you highlighted, uh, the priorities. So relabel the entry, there's an issue. Dashboard, there's an issue. 
commits, there's going to be an issue. I think metrics to measure correct things also going to be an issue and prioritize a lot. It's going to be an issue. Yeah, we have issues okay. for all that. I'll create all those issues and add Thank the labels you. properly so that we can discuss them next week. Cool. Thank you. Thorsten, you have one issue to create. I don't remember um, what it was. I'm actually creating two, right? I'm creating one for commit detail and commit. Yes, that's it. Uh, commit, uh, commit list. You know what to do. All right. And I'm actually doing it right now, so you'll see it in one second in the notes. <laughs> Perfect. All right. We're at time, though, so we will see it asynchronously. Okay. Thank you so much for the call. Exciting conversations and discussions. Um, and I'll see you in two weeks, uh, another uh, time here on this call. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. Great evening. See ya. You know. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>